Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, so that we may prepare ourselves to worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Whoops. That messed up. you 
Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. O oh God, who are pleased to give us a shining example of the Holy Family, grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity. And so, in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal reward. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Sirach. God sets a father in honor over his children, a mother's authority he confirms over her sons. Whoever honors his father atones for sins and preserves himself from them. When he prays, he is heard. He stores up riches who reveres his mother. Whoever honors his father is gladdened by children, and when he prays, is heard. Whoever reveres his father will live a long life. He who obeys his father brings comfort to his mother. My son, take care of your father when he is old. Grieve him not as long as he lives. Even if his mind fail, be considerate of him. Revile him not all the days of his life. Kindness to a father will not be forgotten. Firmly planted against the debt of your sins, a house raised in justice to you. The word of the Lord. a fruitful vine 
A reading from Colossians. Brothers and sisters, put on as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If one has a grievance against another, as the Lord has forgiven you, so must you also do. And over all these put on love, that is, the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you were also called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word and in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, be subordinate to your husbands, as is proper in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and avoid any bitterness toward them. Children, Obey your parents in everything, for this is pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, so they may not become discouraged. The word of the Lord. of Christ control your hearts. Let the word of Christ dwell in you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o When the days were completed for their purification, according to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. 
Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons, in accordance with the dictate and the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple. and When the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word, For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light for the revelations to the Gentiles, and glory for your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be contradicted. And you yourself, a sword will pierce, as that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This Sunday, we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Family. Since 1969, it has been celebrated on the first Sunday after Christmas, linking the incarnation of Jesus to the human family who loved, protected, and taught him. Today's gospel ends with the words, the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. And all of this happened in the context of family. The church asks us on this feast day to not only celebrate the Holy Family, but also to celebrate our own family. It's easy to imagine the Holy Family as vastly different from our own, holy and more spiritual. And while it is true they were very holy, it is also true that the Holy Family was fully human, which means that what they obtain is possible for each of us. It seems like modern theological scholars try to make the Holy Family more like us so that we can better relate to them. When in reality, we are called to become more like them. The Second Vatican Council placed tremendous importance on the Christian family. The council saw the family as the basic unit of any society and a Christian family as a central and foundational building block of the church. The council brought back an ancient uh, term, the domestic church, to refer to and reverence the human family. In our own diocese and parish, there are young couples joining the domestic church movement so that they, together, can help one another learn how to grow in holiness with their spouses and with their families. The term domestic church is both a fitting and accurate label for the Christian family because within it, this intimate community, we should first learn how to love and to be loved. 
It is here that we first learn who God is and how we are to relate to him. Creatures made in God's image and likeness, created out of pure love, and through our baptism, adopted as his very own children, heirs of his heavenly kingdom. It is here that we first discover our true purpose in life. As the Baltimore Catechism so succinctly put it, to know, love, and serve God in this life and be happily, eternally happy with him in the next. It is here that we first learn how to pray, how to love sacrificially, how to forgive, how to ask for and accept forgiveness. The Feast of the Holy Family is a reminder that we are all blessed with family, as imperfect as that blessing may be at times, and called to make our experience of family holy. And we do this by imitating the love and holiness of the family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. This is well illustrated by the true story of a 20th century Jewish man. Viktor Frankl was a famous psychiatrist who at the start of World War II had a chance to escape the impending disaster that everybody knew the Nazis would bring. Frankl was living in Vienna, Austria at the time and was already on his way to a brilliant medical career. But he was not alone. He lived with his elderly parents. And when he obtained a precious visa to America, Frankel knew he had faced a monumental decision. He walked around his neighborhood for a long time, seeking some sign to tell him whether he should go to America or whether he should stay here with his parents. When he finally returned home, he was met by his father. His father was holding a small piece of tile. When asked about it, his father explained that he had picked it up at the synagogue, which the, the Nazis had shortly destroyed. He said the tile contained a Hebrew character, which could only be from one of the commandments. Frankel asked his father which commandment the Hebrew character was from. His father replied, the fourth commandment. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Frankel had his sign. He would stay in Vienna until he and his parents were taken to a concentration camp. There, he would care for his parents until they both died. At a relatively early age, Frankel had learned the meaning of family. If we continually seek to imitate the Holy Family, they will guide us, give us strength, and keep us mindful that God has a plan for our lives. Within our own parish, the St. Joseph Society, the St. Anne Society, and our Acts Retreats are working to help families imitate the Holy Family and seek God's plan for their lives. The road ahead of us will likely still be filled with difficulties and challenges, but we will meet them with trust and confidence that God is an integral part of our family a family of faith where love and forgiveness abide, where people feel secure because others care about them, where people feel confident because others believe in them, where people feel valued because others respect and accept them. Come what may, the family will help us grow, will leave us strong, we will be filled with wisdom and with the favor of God upon us. I believe in one God, the Father.
Now let us bring our prayers to the Lord. For the church, that God will form us into a family of faith that encourages and supports one another in living the gospel more fully each day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a deepening of our prayer, that the Spirit will guide our families in praying together and help us to listen to God's response in the quiet of our hearts and our own experience of each day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the pandemic, that God will heal the sick, comfort the grieving, and strengthen health care workers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families who are suffering, that God will heal families who are estranged from one another, reunite families that have been separated at the border, help those in refugee camps to support one another, and keep parents in prison in communication with their children, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all children, that Emmanuel will protect them from harm and help them discover their identity as children of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in Jerusalem, that the holy city for Jews, Muslims, and Christians may be a place of dialogue, respect, and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died and for all who mourn them, we pray to the Lord. In silent prayer, let us now mention our own special intention. We pray to the Lord. Lord Almighty God, we ask you to hear these prayers and those that we hold in our hearts. Continue to show us your mercy and your love, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Shall 
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hand for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and St. Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all those who, holding on to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servant. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those celebrating the most sacred day on which the Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hand, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of this. For this is my body, which will be given up for In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of The mystery of faith. We proclaim God's heaven, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants in your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us that through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Remember especially Raul Carabello. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercy. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, to whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Just a <clears throat> couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, uh, the, the Holy Day Mass uh, this week, uh, the Solemnity of Mary, Mother of God. Uh, Mass will be at 5 o'clock uh, on New Year's Eve in the evening, and then at 10 o'clock in the morning on New Year's Day. The parish offices will also be closed this Thursday and Friday for the New Year's holiday. Please stand. For the end of this pandemic and all the damage that it has caused, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Blessed Stanley Rother. Let us pray. Bring those you refreshed with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thank